All right, what's up, Graceway? You doing good today? Did you enjoy that worship set? I enjoyed that worship set. Thanks, team, for leading us. Hey, if you're a guest, thank you for being here. My name's Tim. I'm the lead pastor, and we got a special day for you today, but I want to talk to you just for a few minutes before I introduce that to you. Have any of you guys ever found yourself in a season just of pressure? That, that you feel like everything that you kind of put your hands to, you either pushed it further away from you or it broke. Have you ever been there? Yeah. And, and you know, anytime that you're in a season of pressure and stress, uh, some of that's just the reality of living in a fallen world. That Jesus isn't fully on the throne yet like he will be one day when he restores everything. That's just the nature of it. That's why we need a Savior. And God calls us out of pressure to find comfort in him. Sometimes God's squeezing you to get the stuff in your character out that needs to get out so you can bring God more glory. And sometimes it's spiritual warfare. And sometimes it's all three. But we've been in an interesting season here at Graceway. We are putting in place a number of very important uh, kind of uh, plans and vision, and, and today I want to talk to you about a partnership that's very, very important for us. Um, if you've gone through Growth Track, you've heard me say that God gets to pick the vision of the church because it's His. That you don't get to, as a pastor or a deacon or an elder, say, well, the vision of this church is X, Y, Z. You've got to find out what the vision is for the church is as God provides it to the church. Because it's his, he bought the church with the blood of his son, Jesus Christ. And I believe that God articulates that very clearly in Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 and 20. He's gathered the disciples around himself. They're going to become the apostles, kind of the genesis of the, the church. And, and we stand on those apostolic shoulders. And he makes this statement to them. Matthew 28, verses 19 and 20. Go therefore and make disciples of what? of all nations. Don't only make it hard to go to hell in Kansas City. Make it hard to go to hell anywhere. Make it so that there are people who claim the name of Jesus Christ in every tongue, tribe, and nation. And when they become disciples, when they become followers, you need to baptize them. And you need to baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit because all three were involved in the saving of that person. And so when you baptize somebody, you say, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You're a disciple of Jesus Christ. And once they become a disciple, and once you baptize them, you need to teach them. You need to teach them to observe everything that God commanded. And God promises to be with us always, even to the end of the age. Now, it's interesting because there are two phrases in there that are important. One is to make disciples of all nations. And the second is to teach them to observe the things that God has commanded. And there's one thing that's necessary for both of those. And you assume it, and I assume it on a regular basis. It's the ability to read God's word in our own language. It's the ability to pull out my smartphone, pull up my app, go to a Bible version that I prefer, and read it in an English language that I understand. But that's not the reality for many people in the world today. And so I want you to imagine with me that you have never heard in a language that you understand, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but should have eternal life. If you never understood that, if you never had that opportunity, if you had never heard the name of Jesus in a language that you understand, then you would be living in what the Bible calls darkness. You would be living in darkness until the light of the name of Jesus Christ was cast upon your life in a language that you understood that you could take a step of faith in. Last August, I became the lead pastor here at Graceway. And our former senior pastor, Pastor Jeff, put three Bibles in my hand. He put some completed translations that this church commissioned. In fact, in the last 15 or 20 years, this church has commissioned three works in languages in Mexico. We paid for them. They're completed. There are individuals, tens of thousands of individuals who now have the Bible in their language, now can interact with God in their language, now can see churches planted in their language. And we're currently working on a translation in Western Africa that's going to affect 433,000 people. 433,000 people, yeah. 433,000 people who can have the Word of God in a language that they understand. We're actually in phase three of that project. In phase two, 
the translation of Genesis 1 through 11 was completed, and the Jesus film in that language was completed. Phase 3, we're going to accomplish 10 more books of the Bible so that churches can be planted, so that people can be saved, so that God's name can be lifted up. And Pastor Jeff put an uncompleted word of God in my hands on that day and essentially said to me, don't mess it up, son. (laughs) And so I just need to declare to you today, and this is part of the reason that I think that there's been some spiritual warfare going on in my life, that I don't intend to screw it up. That I want to take very seriously the reality of the fulfillment of the Great Commission manifesting itself in putting the Word of God in a known language to all tongue, tribe, and nation. And our partner in that work is the Seed Company. Seed Company has been a partner of ours since the early 1900s, or 1900s, my goodness gracious. (laughs) We've been doing this a long time, boss. Yeah, the early 1990s. Uh, I actually went out to California in April and spent time with the leadership of Seed Company, and they put an incredible statistic in front of me. And they said that we believe in faith that by 20, listen to this, 2025, every single language on the earth could have the word of God That's accessible to it. 2025. It's 2018, y'all. That's seven years from now. And I remember thinking as I was listening to them, oh, I'm getting Graceway's name on that wall. Because I'm not going to stand before Jesus and have him say, I don't know what y'all were doing while I was trying to get the Bible. Y'all were doing your growth track and first Sundays. And I was trying to get the Bible into people's hands and you missed it. I'm not going to have that happen. We are going to be a part of that. And so I asked the president of Seed Company to come to Kansas City on October 21st, which is today. And there he is, okay? And so, and so I'm excited for him to be here, and I asked him to come, and I'm going to bring him up on the stage, and I'm just going to ask him five questions because I want you to hear from him what I heard from them in April, and I want you to understand that, that listen to me, the work that we want to see God do in Kansas City and across the world cannot happen if God's word is not in people's hands. It is, it is the fundamental necessity for people to be able to hear from God in a language that they understand. And so we're going to be committed to that moving forward as we seek to make it hard to go to hell from the planet Earth. Come on, somebody. All right? And so I'm going to invite him up in a minute. And when I do, I want you to give him a good Graceway welcome. But before I invite him, I want you to watch this. A wise friend once told me years ago, Bernie, if you want to be successful, find out which way God's going and go with him. God is working in the world. And the critical question for the Christian is, is what is God doing? Sometimes it's hard to know. Sometimes we get caught up in what we're doing and miss what God is doing. Habakkuk was such a man. Habakkuk is saying, God, if you're working, why is why isn't it happening? Why aren't we making more progress than we are? Shina, hey, you see Now, prayer is always the first thing you do, but it's not the last thing you do. And when you begin to pray for something, it won't be long before God tells you to take a next step. And you know, our goal is not to just get a book translated. It's not a book that is the end result. It's transformed lives. I believe it's God's desire that every person have the scriptures in some language. I believe that for a long time. I'm more excited about it happening than I've ever been. And I believe God's words to Habakkuk are just as appropriate today. He says, look to the nations and be utterly amazed 
For I'm going to do something in your days that you would not believe, even if you were to. God's work. Hey, would you stand up and welcome President of Seed Company, Mr. Samuel Chang. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, first off, thank you for being here. Thank you. I, uh, I'm excited for what God's doing through and in Seed Company. And so I just wanted you to come and um, let folks hear what that is. But uh, before we do that, I, I was curious if you could just tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, where you're from, what's God been doing in your life, how'd you end up at Seed Company, how long ago, all that good stuff. Your social security number, all that kind of good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> 8786. Um, so, you know, Pastor Tim, thank you so much for inviting me here, and thank you so much for having partnered with God's work around the world. It's a privilege to uh, join in with God's work. I never thought one day that, uh, that I was going to be doing that. I was born in Taiwan, and then to my parents, uh, they moved us to Canada. We lived in the U.S. for uh, five years to study, and then I lived in Hong Kong with our family for 25 years. I'm husband of one wife. Uh, her name is Robbie, and so we have three kids, two of them are married, the boys are married, and our daughter is um, still single. She insists that she won't be, get married until she's 30, of which I cheered on and said, great. <laughs> Can and I have her talk to my daughter? Would that be okay? <laughs> and my wife says, you're really selfish. And so I... Um, That's fine. I, That's you fine. Know, yeah. um, and, you know, um, I was really happy doing what I was doing uh, in the work that God has entrusted to me. And that time, it was uh, really in 2014, I was in West Africa. <clears throat> Excuse me. And, and I remember that um, during that time, I was uh, on the search committee for C Company's uh, next CEO president. And during the time in West Africa, um, I was traveling, and then we were trying to figure out what to do with um, upgrading the resources for this other organization. And it was the time also of the Ebola crisis. During that time, God really not only met with me, but detoured me along the way. And out of really obedience to God, that I said, okay, Lord, I'm willing to submit my name forward and participate with you. And it was through that, that's a huge change in terms of transition that I came into the seed company, um, really commencing in July 2015. It's been such a wonderful privilege. You see, I, I love what I was doing before. In fact, I used to wake up every morning and get really excited, uh, just loving what I, what I did. And I wasn't quite sure that the transition taking place would meant the same thing. I can assure you, I still get up every morning really excited doing what I do now. Um, and it's something that God has put onto my heart, and it's been a wonderful privilege just to participate with Him in that. Yeah, yeah. That's a good word for somebody in here, because you're doing something that you like, but God, you know God wants you to do something else, and you're afraid you won't like it as much. And what He's saying is, you'll be fine, right? God always brings joy when we follow his purposes. And so that's a good word. Uh, so when I was with you guys in, um, in California, I heard a lot of your interest in and determination for getting the Bible into, you guys called it the heart language of every, of every tribe, tongue, and nation. And so can you explain to us what that is and why it's important for every single person to have access to that? Sure. If we can imagine about um, heart language, it would be no different than 
a mother or a grandmother, grandfather or father holding a newborn baby. They may whisper to the baby in a distance between the eye and the eye as you cradle. You talk in a language that you know and that they know. And it's with that, right around the world, there are so many different languages. There are over 7,300 different languages around the world. They speak in their mother tongue, the tongue that they dream in, the tongue they, they, they fight with each other in, and the tongue that they speak to their babies in. We call that a mother tongue or the heart language of the individual. That's what we grew up with. And so it is important that when we hear the Scripture in their heart language, that they understand and they hear it as an ah. This is what God has been speaking with us about. So, you know, as a, as a really result of that, uh, when the Scripture is translated in their heart language, oftentimes you will hear, not only do they say, hey, did you know that Jesus lives in our village? Hey, did you know that Jesus speaks our language? And then sometimes, you know, they will say, hey, be careful what you say because Jesus speaks our language. Be careful with you, what comes out of your mouth. I mean, this is how real it is. And it's literally a sense of uh, John chapter 1, verse 14, when it talks about that God dwell, or Jesus dwell among us. He tabernacled amongst us. And that's the whole idea of seeing not only the movement towards the mother tongue, but when they receive the Scripture in their heart language, they say, oh, I recognize Jesus speaks my heart language, speaks my language, and I need to learn to be holy just as He is holy and walking amongst us. It's a very precious thing when you hear over and over and over again because the testimonies of the tribes and nations and tongues right around the world, speaks the same thing. It gives the same testimony when they encounter the real living God through Jesus Christ speaking in their heart language. Yeah, amen. That's awesome. Okay, so uh, talk to us a little bit, if you would, about, um, and, and let me, before I ask this question, uh, you know, I, I think that this is the best church in the world. <laughs> I, I love this church. I'm excited to be a part of this church. And uh, I know that that sounds a little cocky, but I'm fine with it, okay? Uh, and so I always want to put in front of you the best partnerships that I can. And, and I, I really believe, and in, in, in talking with Pastor Jeff and in doing my research, I really think that the seed company is doing the absolute best job in the translation world of anybody doing it. Not that there aren't good people, not that they aren't doing a good job. I just think that, 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 that this man is leading an organization that is doing the best job. And so I'm curious if you can kind of talk to us and get as, you know, detailed as you'd like about the translation process. How does it work? And then how is the way that you guys are doing it unique? Sure. Um, I might be a little bit long-winded on this. Yeah. And, yeah. and so uh, some 25 years ago, uh, the Bible translation movement got together and they started calculating out how many years is it before every language around the world will receive some scripture. And they calculated it out to be 150, maybe 200 years before all of the languages will have a little bit of translation of the living word of God in their heart language. And they said, that's not acceptable. And so what they did was they started a seed company some 25 years ago and said, that's the skunk works, go to it, accelerate discover, experiment, explore, and see how you could bring those number of years down from 150 to 200 years down to what might be acceptable as to an aspirational vision of 2025. And so that's how we started, really, uh, as a skunk works uh, of the entire Bible translation movement. And in that exploration, one of the th things and the key things that we attuned to and are involved with and desire intimately with is really the aspect of relational building and of prayer. You heard in the video talking about prayer. That is the very absolute foundation of our work, that we count on God's people to pray together so that 
the invisible layer and the foundation of that prayer allows us human fallen ones to be able to dance across it, to be able to skate across it so that we can work together. Without that prayer, which is so critical to our work, because the enemy doesn't want to see his scripture in the hands of people. That prayer is what creates that foundation allowing us to work together. So the, the aspect of prayer, you say, well, gee whiz, doesn't everybody else do that? But when you come to scripture, this is what ties us together. This is what brings unity. And you won't believe this. When people who are with national partners around the world, prayer and Bible translation actually gets unified together. And so we are counting on prayer, and we bring that aspect together for every part of our translation process. So that's number one. Number two is that we actually partner with national uh, believers, the indigenous Moses, if you will. God has placed his choice servants right across the world. He has identified them, and we get to really work with God's choice servants. And, you know, in the completion of those Bibles that Pastor Jeff had handed off to you, really they're done by the choice, the choicest servant, those Moses, those fathers of the church who put it all together for their people. And this is what we get to partner with God in because he has put them in place right across the world. And in that partnering, what is really important is that they are able to bring together the community. And you know, any community, they all have their different opinions. They all work differently. So prayer feeds into that to bring unity into the community. And the community owns that entire process of Bible translation together. You, you know, over the time and period of Bible translation as a project that moves from one stage to the next stage, and maybe in seven years we get the New Testament, there's growth, there's understanding, there's unity, and you see the church coming together, and that's the body of which, which God, or I mean, what Jesus talks about in John chapter 17, 15, 16, and 17. You see that, and we get to witness how God transformed people community, to come together to do and bring the Word of God alive. And so prayer is an accelerant. Partnering with nationals, it's an absolute accelerant. And the third aspect is we get, get to bring innovation along. You say, well, what type of innovation are you doing? Some of it would be as simple as in the last decade doing satellite. But also we practice of doing Bible translation by bringing more than one language together. So you might think that we do language translation as uniquely individual, one translation or one language at a time. Oftentimes, we actually do a little bit more than that. We bring them together as a cluster. So if these two or three or four languages sound similar, are near families to each other, they get brought together, and it's a cluster that works together. And you know, that formation has an aspect of the adult education pieces. You might recall in the video that you just saw, there was uh, several men sitting in front of a computer, and they all had their script out. And there was one point, and one guy sort of took his script and put it down on the paper, and got up, and actually held his head like this. Well, oftentimes, when you do Bible translation together, in a cluster format, the adults come together no different than like the adults here. We have those aha moments, and those aha moments speaks to us. It would be no different than, if you will, like they discover, ah, this is the right word for righteousness, or oh, this is the right word for the word, or oh, this is the right word for the word gospel. All of these come together all at once, and that they are able to have those aha moments, discover what God through the Holy Spirit has given to them, and that's also an accelerant as a, as, as a means of an innovation. So uh, the, using innovation satellite technology or using uh, in that situation 
clustering of languages together. And I'll just add one more, uh, that uh, God has allowed um, our organization to participate in something of bringing artificial intelligence and convolutional neural networks together for the sake of Bible translation for the sign deaf people. You all know what that is, right? Convolutional neural networks? Yeah, 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 you're good. good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Yeah, if you Wikipedia that and just type in CNN, not the broadcaster, but uh, the CNN, the the convolutional neural network, it's it's on there in Wikipedia. Um, You know, sign deaf languages, of which there's over 350 um, languages that's sign deaf, of which there are over 70 million people around the world who use sign languages, it's been very difficult to capture the signs and symbols and understand how to communicate with them so you got to decode, encode, categorize, etc. And so we use a little bit of that type of technology, developing it and trying to reach the sign deaf people. So innovations over time, uh, we bring all of that together for the sake of Bible translation. Yeah, that's good. Uh, just, just in my own experience, uh, when the iPhone 10 came out, iPhone X, uh, way cooler than 10, um, came out. Uh, Ash and I were actually in the Netherlands, and we went into an Apple store, and they handed me an iPhone, and they, they had me hold it up, and they said, make like a facial expression. And I made whatever expression, and the, the graphic, the emoji, made it back to me. And he was like, isn't that awesome? I was like, yeah, uh, yeah I guess so. Um, and, uh, and I was with them in April, and they were talking about using that technology to be able to get uh, the Bible into one of the 350 different deaf languages. Uh, and so they would be able to watch on their phone as somebody would sign back to them. And they actually played a video uh, of a gentleman, I think in Brazil, who his daughter, what is it? Carlos, yes, Carlos, yes. yeah, yeah. Uh, his daughter, he and his daughter are both deaf, and she was watching a video of the Bible being signed her using that technology, which was absolutely incredible. And, and just let that sink in for, for a minute. Over 350 different sign languages, all of which need to be able to interact with God through his word in their heart language. And I also just want to say this to you. Um, we're going to talk about this in a second, but... You know, some theologians think that the fulfillment of the Great Commission is tied to getting the Bible into every tongue, tribe, and nation. And so I just want you to think for a second that ours is the generation. I'm 40. If in seven years I'll be 47 if God gets me there. And we are the generation that could actually fulfill the Great Commission. And there are other theologians who say that the thing that God is waiting on to come back is the church to stand up, do its job, and fulfill the Great Commission. Uh, I hope that you know that the church has always thought it was living in the last days. Always, always, always. Uh, But I think that God is waiting for the church to get serious about his vision for it. And I think that it's conceivable, conceivable, that this generation, that you and I could be a part of fulfilling the Great Commission and and conceivably um, that God would come back as as a response to that. What, a, what an incredible, an incredible privilege, right? I said to you a couple weeks ago, you live in a specific time and place under the sovereignty of God. That is the privilege of living in this time and having partners like this. So uh, 2025, you guys say, you talk about imagining zero. Zero languages that do not have at least a part of scripture. Um, so can you tell us where are we? In, you know, what's, what's the thermostat on the wall look like, right? What's the countdown look like? How's that going? How long will it take us to get there? How are you feeling about that? Ah, um, so Pastor Tim, when you were out in California with us, that number on the countdown clock or on the thermostat was actually 1,559. So we thought, yeah, we could just keep on going. Well, Bible Translation Movement got together, to scrubbed the numbers, and collaborated with greater amount of transparency and um, talking to each other, well, there's a new number. The new number is 2,184. It went up by 40%. But I got to tell you, it's, a, it's actually one of the most exciting times because God actually knew the number was going to go up. <laughs> we were just counting down, but God actually knew the number was going to go up, number one. And number two, all the way from our board, all the way down, to our colleagues, we're excited. 
because we can't wait to see what God will have to do in order for us to reach imagining zero. So we're, we're, where we are is we're great with great excitement, great anticip anticipation, trusting God that we will be able to imagine zero by 2025 together. Okay. All right. That's awesome. Okay, so uh, what, what did I fail to ask here today that, would, that is, a piece of the, is a piece of the picture or of the puzzle that you think would help us better understand and get our arms around, around this vision? What, what else would, would you like to say to us? Uh, yeah, I don't think you missed anything. Thank that, you uh, so much. So <laughs> I'll just have to make this part up. Um, you know, uh, one of the things about Bible translation is that we're always looking for people who could come alongside with us so that we could do things together. And um, one of the things that um, I would really invite your congregants to do is feel free to go to our website, uh, seedcompany.com, and look at the roles that's there. Many of them are evergreen roles, and we would just invite you into things that, that God might have purpose for you as God has given the assignment to Seed Company. And I, I would say that if you would consider looking at that and sensing together and discern together what God has for you and how C Company might fit in part of your, your lives, we will welcome that because this part of the mission, it is within our generation. It's the first time ever in history we know who they are, where they are at, and what they're requesting. And so this is one of those times that we have the ability to know how to... Uh, uh, be partnering with them. So we're always looking for participants with us. And um, I very much would want to be able to, uh, to invite your congregants into this process. Yeah. Yeah. And I will tell you, we said this in the, in the last service, if you happen to go onto their website, seedcompany.com yeah. and say, you know what? I think I want to go to work for a seed company. Then I'll bring you up on this stage and we'll pray over it and you'll, we'll send you out uh, because this is an important, an important thing. Um, how many of you guys know that whenever, whenever God calls a person, a man or a woman, into a ministry or into a vocation that aligns with his kingdom and his purposes, that the enemy takes, takes notice of that? And, uh, and this, is, this is a man who's leading a, a really fantastic organization to try to get the Bible into every single language inside of our generation. And so how many of you know that the enemy is going to do everything that he can to distract and discourage and... and, and make life difficult. And so how can we, how can we pray for a seed company and then most specifically you and your family? Well, thank you. Um, well, very specific about prayer, uh, one of the things that we do as an organization is that every single uh, language project that goes to be released, we attach 10 people who are praying for that language so that it could be released. And that prayer aspect for 10 of them for every single language is critical to us. But you could also imagine together 2,184 remaining languages. So the roads are wide open for people to sign up to say that's over 21,840 people that they need. And as you think about it, please think about how you could sign up together with that and be part of the process of translation. We've only talked about translation here. We haven't even talked about the translators, the national partners, uh, the ones that you saw on the screen. They come together, they equally, if not more, face the spiritual battle, sometimes through sickness, sometimes through war, sometimes through tragedies. They also need prayer deeply. So we invite you specifically to sign up with us. We would love to have, we would love to have, if you will, over 21,000 people on the roll waiting and say, hey, where's the next translation? How could I get involved in it? We would love to have that and set the standards, set the pace for us and join us in that for C Company. The second thing um, for our families, I, I, um, I'm just very thankful that uh, my wife, Robbie, uh, continues to support this entire process. Um, I used to 
in our married life, I used to pr travel a lot, and I travel a little bit less now, and, um, and, and yet none of this could be done without her uh, with me and supporting the entire process. So when you think of uh, C Company, uh, not only myself, but if you don't mind, think about the word Robbie, the name Robbie. And uh, if you just lift it up to God, God knows what that is all about. And so uh, we'll direct the prayers for that. So thank you for asking about that. Absolutely. Absolutely. So let me give you a, a couple next steps here, okay? Um, we have prayer teams and prayer groups. And so if you're in here and you say, well, I could be, I could be one of those 21,000 people. Uh, I could get Graceway started on that and set pace. I want you to go out to the next steps desk. And, and Pastor Elisha, our missions pastor, is out there. And there's a sign-up sheet for I'd like more information or I'd like to get involved. Uh, so praying is one way, prayer team or prayer group. Uh, second is we have what we call our legacy team in which we put uh, large-scale, high-vision projects in front. Seed Company is already on that list. Um, and if you would like to get connected to our legacy team to get more information, quarterly information about the different projects that we're working on, you can go out to the Next Steps desk and you can sign up for that. If you say, I don't want to be on a prayer team, I don't want to be on a legacy team, but I do want to resource what God is doing, you can go out and you can sign up, say it with me, at the Next Steps desk, okay? If you have any questions or you have any whatabouts or how does it work or any of those kind of things, we have all of that information. I just need you to go out to the Next Steps desk and I need you to put your name and whatever your best contact information down and we'll get you all of that. I'm trying to make it as simple as I can for you for you to get your name on the wall when we get this job done, okay? Uh, and so you can just go out of this room after we dismiss Say, I'd like to sign up, Pastor Elisha, or some of our, our uh, dream team will help you with that. Put your name down, and we'll get back to you this week, okay? A uh, couple other things that I want to get in front of you, and then I'm going to have you stand up, and we're going to pray for Seed Company and for Brother Samuel and Miss Robbie. Uh, growth Track Step 3 is today. Uh, discover your purpose. For some of you, you just heard it. You just heard it, right? Uh, God is going to take you to go to work for a seed company, to translate at whatever level of expertise. <laughs> uh, uh, that, that's it. And, uh, and, and for some of you, it's that you're going to give. For some of you, it's that you're going to pray. But that's a way that we kind of help you take that next step. We're going to start a new series. I'm trying to teach you through the Old Testament, through the different stories that are there. So next Sunday, we're going to start Kings and Judges. Uh, you are not going to want to miss the beginning of that. The, uh, the lady that we're going to be talking about has a fantastic story. I bet that you have passed over her many times, so make sure that you're back for that. But we're going to stand up right now. I'm going to dismiss you, and we're going to pray for Samuel and, and his wife, Robbie, and Seed Company. Was this good today? Yeah. Did I help you? All right. Hey, Pastor Tim here. I hope that you enjoyed our service. If it was a blessing to you or God spoke to you, I hope that you'll let us know. Shoot us an email at amen at visitgraceway.org. We would love to hear what God's doing in your life and how we might be able to help you in it. If you'd like to support our ministry, you can support us by giving right there. And if you live in the Kansas City area, I hope that you'll stop by and give us a visit. We'd love to shake your hand, buy you a cup of coffee, worship Jesus together. Let us know how we can be of help to you, and I hope to see you soon.